Hey there, welcome back to Manatic Stringworks. Glad to have you here. So please remember to like and subscribe for more video content. All right, so today in the workshop, we have this nice cedar Art and Luthery acoustic guitar. It's a three quarter parlor size. It's really nice, beautiful color. It's been played well used, loved. It's made in Canada. I believe it's Godin that's the manufacturer. It's one of their brands. So this one's been sitting around for a while. And just need a string change. Have a look at the setup. Make sure there's no major issues. But I really like these guitars. The brand Art and Luthery. Really nice. All right, so let's get started. Why don't we start by checking the string action here at the 12th fret. So acoustic guitars, you like to see, you know, 6 64 on the bass side, 5 or 4 64 on the treble. If you can get this to 5, that would be nice. So let's start at 6. Pretty good, it's like right under it, just barely, you know, barely any room. Starting to get tighter. Yeah, so I can't get it under there completely. Alright, so let's try 564. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of space there. Again, you can just run it under, but when you press down, you can hear the bounce. That's why I like using these gauges. Well, it's getting better. So that's pretty good. So it looks like we're about six and it starts to creep down to four, or sorry, five when we get to the treble side. So that's pretty good action for a guitar that's just been sitting around for a while. All right, let's check the neck relief. It does have a truss rod adjustment in here, inside the sound hole. Capo the first fret. I'll start at 12 thousandths. Now we hold down the string right around the body. Anywhere here is good. Hmm, it's pretty nice. It's, it's tight under there. Let's try 10 thousandths. Just touching. You know, that's really good relief. So far, the string height and the neck relief are pretty darn good. I'm curious about the first fret action now. Kind of suspecting it's going to be low, so I'm going to start at 18. Yep. <laughs> so if you put a feeler gauge under there and it buzzes, you know you're touching. So it's 18,000, it's maybe a little less. So we're going to put some new strings on. I, I suspect these are lighter gauge strings. But let's have a look here. Mm, hard to get a measurement sometimes. <laughs> I call that 11 thousandths. And let's go to the bass string. 52. Sometimes you have to measure the string in a few spots. Seems to be 11, 51, trying to this spot, 51. So I'm going to call these lighter gauge. So I'll, I've got a set of 11 to 52s. I think that's what we'll use. All right, so let's change the strings and we'll give the fretboard a good cleaning and conditioning. Bridge pins. Again, I used to use my little cheap plastic tool I got for free from some other purchase. <laughs> Does a great job. 
Doesn't hurt anything. The scratch. Easy to use. Sometimes you have to push the string down a little bit to help it uh, get out of a slot. Ooh, that one's fighting me. <laughs> the bridge is loose there. I'm going to make a mark on it right here in the front. Uh, sometimes when you're taking things in and out and doing things you forget which way is which. <laughs> now this is compensated so it's a little easier but still why not make a little mark. Put that away. So I'm just going to give this guitar a good little dusting to start. I noticed the headstock was a little dusty. It has been in its case though, so that's a good thing. Prevented a lot of dirt and grime and unwanted stuff. So these tuners don't have any screws on the back. So while we're here, let's see if they need tightening. I'm going to guess it's a 10 mil, yeah. So Stumac wrench, these are the thin ones. 10 mil. They usually are going to need tightening, right? Especially over the winter, yeah, look at that. Over the winter they loosen up, things shrink. It's important to tighten the tuners because you'd be surprised at how much it affects your tuning stability if that post is moving around. You don't have to be crazy tight, but you know, good and snug. Alright, that's better. Alright, so we're going to clean up the fretboard. I'm using Simple Green. Use any detergent that's very mild. This one's uh, environmentally safe, apparently. <laughs> All right, so now we've cleaned it up. So we're going to use some fret erasers now on the frets. So we'll start with 150, 180, 400, and then a thousand. It's a little bit of fret wear, but I bet you just uh, with this light cleaning, the fret erasers will take it right away. So, finish up with 1,000. There's really no wear, obviously, on these frets. So, a little clean. And we'll condition the fretboard with some Dunlop lemon oil. Forget the bridge, too. Alright, so I'm going to put on these light gauge or custom light. These are called 11 to 52s. Acoustic phosphor bronze. Alright, well, let's put that bridge saddle back in. We have our mark. A little loose, a little more loose than I'd like to see it, but the guitar seems to play well. Alright, so I like to bring the string through, line up the post hole with the slot, the nut slot, as close as you can. <laughs> Pull 
go through and I'll start with two tuners, you know, about two inches. Let's see if that's too many. <laughs> Before cutting it off, so I can just pull it. And then I'll just pull it back where I think it should be. Bend it up. And then we'll turn it around and make sure the wraps, the windings are going underneath. Need to cut that back a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. Actually, we'll leave that there. We'll cut this off a little bit though. <laughs> Just gonna get in the way. All right, let's keep going. So these strings are packaged, second and fifth together, third and sixth, first and fourth. I've never strung them up in that order. <laughs> so I'm curious, I'll just try that too. So I did the, obviously I did the third and the sixth, so let's try the second and the four, fifth, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the fifth string. So we wanna bend that end of the ball end here. And we make sure that we're pushing the ball end with the end of the pin and that the string is resting in that slot there. That's how you keep it from popping out. And then at the tuning post end, so I like to line up the post hole with the nut slot. Sorry, it's the fifth here, right? <laughs> with the nut slot, approximately. Pull the string through. I'm going to guess at a couple of inches. Pull it back. Kink it up a bit. We'll cut off some of this. It's a little too much. And then we'll bend it up. Now, of course, you make sure the windings go underneath. Don't need to do anything fancy here. No locking. Luthier's knot or anything like that. Just make sure you go under. It'll tighten up against the string, no problem. I like to take a small screwdriver too and just get under there. Push those wraps up, make sure they're good and tight. All right, let's keep going. So once you've strung it up, obviously we're not in tune. So you start to put some tension and you're gonna hear these pins. I like to, you know, strum the note, tune it up and hold my finger down on the pin. See if it moves at all. And depending on humidity and dryness and stuff, you might get them moving a little bit you get them up to tension but so far so good like that one's a little loose that's gonna tighten up okay well let me tune up this guitar all right so we're all tuned up the initial tuning everything's stopped cracking and popping <laughs> so that's good so like an electric we want to stretch the strings especially the wound string so Grab them sort of halfway, you know, around the 12th fret, I guess. Just pull them up. Don't be shy. Give them a good heave. You know, I like to see at least a semitone pulled out of the strings. Sometimes you can get a full tone, depending, but for sure a semitone. You know, be heavy-handed, whatever you like to do. Everyone's got a technique. All right, definitely out of tune there. So let's see. So here's our six string, yeah, we're semitone down. Same with the A. D not as much. G, 
not as much. That'd be quite a bit. And the E, yeah, a few cents. So that might also be how it's seated, you know, in the bridge, and also, you know, it's settling down at the headstock. So I'm gonna let this sit for a while. Then we'll check all the measurements. Alright, so the guitar has been sitting here for a few hours. It's all tuned up. Looking good. Let's check the string height at the 12th fret. <clears throat> so, using the 664th end of my gauge, it's just touching, so that's good. Same here on the 5th string. It's a little tighter on the fourth, and so we get to the third, second, and first. So we're going to use the five sixty-fourths. Nice. So that's good. So we have action five, 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 starting to get up here, five and a half, let's say, five and a half, six. So very nice string action for an acoustic guitar. And I will check the neck relief. Now I haven't done anything to the truss rod, so we'll start at 12 thousandths, push down anywhere where the neck joins the body, and I have to push it under, <clears throat> it slides under, but it is definitely scraping, so we'll try 10. Okay, so that's pretty good. It's around, I'd say it's a little less than 10. It might be around 8 or 9. But the real test is to see if we get any open string buzzing, especially on the 6th string. I'm strumming that hard, there's nothing. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. So I think we're done with this string change and you know, having a look at the setup. So there it is, Art and Luthery Cedar Body Three Quarter Parlor Acoustic Guitar, made in Canada. The model is AMI, A M I, which means friend in French. Sounds really good, and it's a super fun guitar to have hanging around the living room, bring to a campfire. All right, really nice. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. <laughs> Bye for now.